there are these hearings going on, ostensibly called the weaponization of government hearings. At one point, they were trying to pretend like this was like the church uh, commission hearings. Mm -hmm. But this is all about like how conservatives are maligned in uh, social media. There are legitimate concerns that government has been that government officials have been um, trying to without doing so through a regulatory framework, but more like pick up the phone and go after whatever their particular pet peeves are. Um, we know that um, uh, uh, Angus um, uh, King. King up in Maine did this. I think uh, Schiff did it. We know that McCarthy, uh, Kevin McCarthy did it. We know that the president of the United States, not the current one, but the former one, Donald Trump, did this. It's wrong. They're leveraging uh, the ability of government to um, regulate and uh, using it for their own personal sort of like vendettas or whatever they think is important to, to keep quiet. Now, I think a lot of these conservatives are also complaining that like, there was pressure to not have disinformation about uh, COVID during a, pa a, a pandemic there, et cetera, et cetera. But um, just like you would um, inhibit the ability of Google or AOL back in the day to allow for pedophile groups because it's bad for society, even though they're not necessarily in that act of, of talking about it, uh, you know, doing anything illegal. You'd want to encourage them to uh, shut those groups down, et cetera, et cetera. You might do the same thing during a pandemic. But the bottom line is there needs to be a lot more regulation. But uh, some people are purposely missing uh, the, the story. Now, when we first talked about Matt Taibbi being handed um, files from Elon Musk, uh, it really appeared like he was just doing a PR job for Musk because you're not really reporting on the story of, of how government has interfered or pressured or worked with Twitter or for that matter, corporations, which corporations are doing it all the time as well. Why should we allow massive corporations to dictate? Well, I mean, that's the nature of that business, but, um, it's not really reporting unless you're like giving a sense of the actual breadth of the story. Or reporting on the actual government officials involved. I keep returning well, to this he point. He did mention in he, a half a sentence. Yes. The amazing thing is in this hearing, his response about that was actually longer than the reporting. He we should clarify no what it was, right? I mean, he he Donald he Trump. meant Donald Trump wasn't in, in a conversations with Twitter, Twitter trying to get you know uh, working with their content moderation people. We don't know what the crux, what what that was because he refused to report on it. Biden, not in the White House yet, not in government yet, still a campaign was trying to get the revenge porn of his son taken down, and that's the big thing that started this off. Here is, and this is really embarrassing because. Um, what's her face? Uh, um, this is, um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She was the most hated and incompetent DNC chair we've ever had. Even the people, you know, like the, the, the Obama administration, I'm pretty sure this has since been reported. The Obama administration, which had her in there, they didn't want to deal with getting her out, but she was just horribly incompetent. She's a joke. And to have her uh, be the one, like, it is really sad yeah. that someone this incompetent can make you look so bad so easily. Some people suggest that uh, maybe she watched this show because we played this clip of, uh, of uh, Tybee on Rogan. But this is not even the worst of it. But here, play this because this is important to show just how sort of like sad Tybee's performance here was. And just to clarify, this is the Judiciary, uh, judiciary Committee, not the, oh, it's the Judiciary uh, Committee. Oversight. Sorry. Yeah, it was just Jim, Jim Jordan's, Jordan's on baby. both. Yeah, he's so on both. That's why I say thank Jim Jordan for uh, yeah. you know, the invitation. Right. 
journalistic ethics and information sources. The Society of Professional Journalists Code of Ethics asserts that journalists should avoid political activities that can compromise integrity or credibility. Being a Republican witness today certainly casts a cloud over your ob objectivity. But a deeper concern that I have relates to the ethics of how journalists receive and present certain information. Journalists should avoid accepting spoon-fed, cherry-picked information if it's likely to be slanted, incomplete, or designed to reach a foregone, con easily disputed, or invalid conclusion. Would you agree with that? I think, it's, I think it depends. Really? You, you wouldn't agree that a journalist should avoid spoon-fed, cherry-picked information if it's likely to be slanted, incomplete, or designed to reach a foregone, easily disputed, or invalid conclusion? Mrs. Con uh, Congresswoman, I've done probably a dozen stories involving whistleblowers. Every reported story that I've ever done across three decades involves sources who have motives. Every time you do a story, you're making a, a, a balancing test. Okay. Reclaiming pause the public. Reclaiming yes. Okay, okay yeah. now look, now listen. I actually think that is... A, 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 a somewhat legitimate uh, response here by, by Taibbi. I'll take sources from this person I know who's heavily motivated um, and interested in presenting only one side. If I'm going out and doing a whole host of other reporting, the balancing act is not just should I take it or should I not? It is, am I getting the whole story? What else am I doing to get the whole story? I'm, I'm, I'm going to take from a source. The issue isn't that you shouldn't you shouldn't take stuff that you think is uh, cherry picked and spoon fed uh, to present a specific slant. The issue is you shouldn't turn around and present that as if it's the story. And where is it presented, Sam? Do I your mean reporting to uh, uh, to essentially like, is there more to the story? Yeah. Do it like understanding that I'm only getting one narrow perspective. Then if I put it out as if it's the story, then I'm doing a disservice to the story. If you take a picture of an elephant's anus and go out and say, this is an elephant, that's it. Then all of a sudden, like you're not telling the story of an elephant. You're just and telling the story of a specific, you know, and, 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 and yeah. aside, in addition to the fact that it's so cherry picked and obviously self-serving. And we know, we know that uh, Taibi, all he did was to go through the stuff that he had. And he certainly emphasized some things more than others. But the point is, he didn't have the whole picture. He needs to go out and get all of the stuff yeah. or he needs to go out and find out other sides of the story. And, and and it should give him a tip off really uh, uh, easily if he's a well-respected journalist, award-winning journalist like Republicans were trying to, to paint him as, who would be above, uh, who has the integrity on this front, that the source in this instance is both the CEO of the company he's attempting to uh, blow the lid off of and also seemingly asking him to publish it on the platform Twitter itself, which should be, that's not typical sourcing that you're dealing with there. Well, uh, yeah, no, of course. He on, knew. He on knew. that note, like, I just think like this idea where we have to act like Elon Musk, a guy who was financed by giant banks in the Saudis for a hostile takeover of a major comms platform in advance of an election. Like we have to act like this guy's a whistleblower. That's like damaging to this entire, mm -hmm. like, it, this free society that Taibi is supposedly like uh, speaking on behalf of, well, and like if, if if this was true, if we, if we if Elon Musk was genuine about what Taibi says, he's like, oh, he just wants to like you know clean up the government interference stuff. Go to the I ICIJ, the International Com uh, uh, Consortium of Independent Journalists, who were doing the Panama Papers. You don't go to this handpicked like Taibi and Schellenberger MD, and the MD means Michael D. <laughs> like this is a joke. Yeah, I mean, give me a break. I mean, the, the idea that um, um, that Elon Musk was is to be compared with whistleblowers. What a joke. Yeah. What a joke. But continue, because the funny part comes up here and it actually gets worse after this clip. Foregone, easily disputed or invalid conclusion. Mrs. Con uh, Congresswoman, I I've done probably a dozen stories involving whistleblowers. Every reported story that I've ever done across three decades 
involves sources who have motives. Involved. Every time you do a story, Involved. not you're exclusively a, a balancing test okay. between reclaiming, the public interest. Reclaiming my time. Thank you very much. Okay. I ask you this because before you became Elon Musk's hand-picked journalist, so and pardon the oxymoron, you stated this on Joe Rogan's podcast about being spoon-fed information, and I quote. I think that's true of any kind of journalism, and you'll see it behind me here. I think that's true of any kind of journalism. Once you start getting handed things, then you've lost. They have you at that point, and you've got to get out of that habit. You just can't cross that line. Do you still believe what you told Mr. Rogan? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Good. Now, you crossed that line with the Twitter files. No. Elon Musk, it's my time. Please do not interrupt me. Alaskan, Elon Musk spoon-fed Elon Musk spoon-fed you his cherry-picked information, which you must have suspected promotes a slanted viewpoint, or at the very least generates another right-wing conspiracy theory. You violated your own standard, and you appear to have benefited from it. All right. Hmm. Now, uh, this is pretty low-hanging fruit, because he, he did violate his own standard. And uh, we played that clip of him saying that on uh, Joe Rogan, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but what makes it even worse is because he wants the opportunity to contextualize what he said there on Joe Rogan. And he's given it by a uh, Republican lawmaker. And the idea, though, that like he cannot even um, acknowledge that in this instance he did he did he did violate his own standard and let's make this clear not only did he violate his standard in terms of like what what information he was getting and from where but that was the whole story they may have done he may have done subsequent reporting we don't know but he put it out there on the main platform where it was going to be seen and the whole story was just only the Twitter files. It wasn't the limited Twitter files. They had a whole branding campaign, right? The Twitter files. I mean, you imagine like the Panama files if it was just like, oh, we only took it from specific people. <laughs> yeah. We were handed it from a, a banker who wanted to maybe arrest, you know, one of his clients. Those aren't the Panama files. They get, he knew how narrow what he was getting was. I mean, Jim he Jordan, source. Jim Jordan, who leads this committee, tweeted out before the election, Kanye, Trump, uh, Elon, <laughs> right? Like the idea that this wasn't a politically motivated thing is just, it's an insult well, to people's intelligence. But again, you can get a source, you get sources for, who are politically motivated, who have an agenda all the time, but mm -hmm. unless you're going to be a mouthpiece for them, this is one of the things we've criticized Politico for over the years. I'm sure he has too, and he knows it. Unless you're just going to be a mouthpiece for them, you do other reporting around it mm -hmm. before you go out and publish it. But he didn't do that. And here's his excuse. He's uh, asked the question by Dan Bishop. Do you want an opportunity to, you know, uh, justify yourself? Here to respond to the attack on your ethics? You weren't given really an opportunity to answer. And if you'd be brief, I've got a bunch of stuff I want to ask you as well. Sure, just quickly, the, the, that moment on the Joe Rogan show, I was actually recounting a section from Seymour Hersh's book, Reporter, where he described a scene where the CIA gave him a story and he was very uncomfortable. Uh, he said that I, who had always gotten the secrets, was being handed the secrets. It, look, again, I've done lots of whistleblower stories. There's always a balancing test that you make when you're given material and you're always balancing newsworthiness versus the motives of your sources. In this case, the newsworthiness clearly outweighed any other considerations, and I think everybody else who worked on the project agreed. Doesn't it seem like any reporter who breaks a blockbuster story is going to get it? Pause it for one second. Pause it for one second. So the only standard as to whether you're going to, uh, it, it, to dictate whether you're just going to put one side of the story out there is whether it's newsworthy. I mean, first off, just the idea that he's sort of like saying this is about Cy Hirsch and CIA. It's a, he said, I think it applies to any kind of journalism. Yeah. In other words, it's not just a CIA situation. That standard applies to any type of journalism. But Here's what's amazing about this is that, and I've said this publicly many times, 
I think that uh, Taibi got a raw deal on the reporting about uh, about his book and that he uh, co-wrote in in uh, while about his time in Russia. And I think he got a raw deal uh, about the accusations. I mean, he he without a doubt. His like, I think there's uh, you could say that some of his writing is misogynist. There was at the time uh, and this and that. But he got a raw deal when it came to the accusations of being accused of behavior towards uh, women uh, in that office. I know, they, they, you know, and I don't think he even did some of that writing, but certainly without a doubt, his writing uh, was uh, misogynist at times. But the reason why he got a raw deal was because you never heard from the accusers. When they wrote up these stories, you never heard anything from the accusers because there weren't any. And just like it was misinformation in my mind to just like take one angle and present that as the entire truth. That's exactly what Taibi has done here. Yeah. That's exactly what he's done here. And the and look, it was perfectly newsworthy. That but Taibi had uh, co-written this book, but does that justify the angles and the uh, and presenting it as the complete story because it was newsworthy? Of course not. Yeah. Of course and, not. And the and the Cy Hirsch example is just not analogous. Obviously, what this would be analogous to, if he wants to bring it to like a government uh, whistleblower situation, would be if the director of the CIA gave him information and said, "Well, you're also going to do it as a press release and a uh, on our platform on the official CIA website, and you're just going to dump these documents." That would be called a, a psyop, not reporting. Here, uh, continue with this. And there may be even financial consequences that follow. It seems like as, as surely as the night follows the day, that's the case, right? That is true, although I would like to clear up, you know, s some things that have been misrepresented. Not one of us has actually been paid to do any of this work. We've all, um, you know, traveled on our own. We've, uh, we've hired our personnel on our own. And I've just hired a, a pretty large team to investigate this issue yeah. uh, out of my own pocket. The fact that the attempt comes from the dais across the aisle to smear you, uh, you frankly, uh, I think liberals, if I understand that, uh, uh, in your background, you're both good liberals and you come in and the Democrats' hostility to what you've uh, undertaken is astonishing to behold, but it's part of the picture we're seeing. In Twitter files... Part of the right. picture. First off, the idea that you're not getting paid is just absurd. I mean, is, is Elon Musk paying you directly? No. No. Is he giving tweets. you a valuable uh, asset? I mean, give me a break. You're, yeah. you're, the, uh, you know, it's like, I got a big demand for more uh, cupcakes. I've had to expand uh, my bakers. It's a, it's a wash, but of course it's, uh, I'm doing the cupcakes at the, um, at the inauguration of the president. I mean, yeah. you know, that's like, give me a break. No, I mean, you can tell like the, the way Taibi, like the thing about this is actually more significant than the 2008 financial crisis. Like he knows that's stupid to everybody who knows anything besides Elon Musk. And so, and he's and Elon Musk's fans and that's who he's, who's like <laughs> subscribing to him now. That's who's followed him in the last couple of years. Like he will not do anything to uh, um, put that new fan base in jeopardy. But as you were saying yesterday, Matt, like, uh, or I, it, it might've been you, um, and Bender as well, that he's desperate for his Edward Snowden NSA story, which is that, um, you know, no matter what propaganda Greenwald does and how he's essentially a Republican mouthpiece at this point, um, he always has that to fall back on. That's a piece of credibility. And he's trying to make this his uh, expose. And it's, it's very it, simulated. It's not working. And it's also such... Uh, he's really making the people uh, who are criticizing him out to be such fools because like you're doing this out of the goodness of your heart. You're paying for people to 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 uh, parse through these Twitter files and look all look up all this information. We know that even if you're not making money from the publication of this material, this is all a way to brand yourself. So then people go to subscribe well, to that's your what sub I'm stack. Saying. That's what I'm yeah. saying. You, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna make the cupcakes for the inauguration of the president, 
You're going to do it at a loss because the point is it's a marketing, it's a right. marketing exercise. Gotcha. Okay. Of course, of course. But in here's also sort of like evidence of, of just like, if you're, if your story is that, and frankly, like the thing is, is that I don't even think like the idea that the FBI might be telling um, uh, Twitter, we want you with no legal authority, as far as I can tell, just a really intimidation, right? I mean, this is just stories of intimidation. We're asking you to take this stuff down and Twitter does it because they're afraid of, uh, of you know, possible regulation. We should also say they were operating under a consent order um, well, starting in November, but maybe not during that time. But nevertheless, the idea that like it's about intimidation, you're worried that, you know, the FBI is coming in and doing this. They have no legal authority to do it. Could there be any greater intimidation than the president of the United States? Because the reason why you're nervous about the president of the United States doing it is because they can sick the FBI on it. Mm -hmm. When the FBI comes and says, we want this, at least you have the opportunity to go to other Congress people, to go to the senators, to go to the press and say, hey, this is a problem here. They have no authority to do this. If the president is the one who's doing it, it becomes much harder. So you would think that would be the focus of this story. If it's about government intimidation on a, uh, you know, the town square, you would think that would be the biggest thread that you would be looking into pull. And in fact, it was a thread that Taibbi acknowledged, but went by it so quickly one phrase in the course of, I don't know how many hundreds of tweets he put out was oh, also the president uh, did this. Here, listen to this question. Mr. TV, uh, you have said that this isn't really a matter of right or left, that um, there are lots of different ideological colorations involved in the Twitter policy. Is that roughly correct? Yes. And Mr. Schellenberg, you, you would agree with that? Yes. So when you release information, have you released any information of, for example, right-wing elements or the Trump White House attempting to moderate content at Twitter? Yes. No, not the Trump White House per se, although I, I did report initially in the first Twitter files that the Trump White House had made and, and uh, requests and had been honored. Mr. Shelver, pause it for one second. I, I'm quite convinced that what he said there was actually more words than he actually used <laughs> in his reporting. Yeah. Of, uh, out of like a 35, what was it, 50? I don't know. I didn't follow the whole thing. Yeah, then why Twitter did we threat. choose to uh, see the, all of the information on Hunter Biden, but none from the Trump stuff, the no. one sentence? This is like when Taibbi uh, was doing all the anti-vaxxer stuff. He's like, hey, I also did one blog post about a guy who was uh, uh, censored by YouTube or demonetized on YouTube because he got caught up in their uh, COVID stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And that was, it's ass covering. Total, I did, I did. total. Right wing elements or the Trump White House attempting to moderate content at Twitter. Yes. No, not the Trump White House per se, although I, I did report initially in the first Twitter files. He almost forgot about Trump it. It White was House so meaningless to his reporting. And, and, uh, requests and had been honored. Mr. Uh, Shelver? I did not find that. You haven't Twitter found files. it. So we had a hearing the other day on Twitter and we had four witnesses, three for the majority, one for the minority, and all four testified under oath they had never received a request for content moderation or takedown by the Biden White House, but they did from Donald Trump's White House. And specifically, uh, the case brought up was an exchange between Donald Trump, then President of the United States, and Chrissy Teigen, uh, where she, you know they, he had called her something and she called him something back, I won't repeat it. Um, and uh, and this was under oath confirmed. Yeah, that happened. And that the White House shortly thereafter, after Tegan, uh, Tegan uh, <laughs> had her email about the president, which was pejorative, that the White House called Twitter to try to take on the content. Are you were that, Mr. Tebe? 
Yeah, I've, I've certainly heard that in the news. Yes. And, but did you see that email exchange? No, I, I have not seen a, uh, an exchange from the Trump White House. So I, I have seen one from Congressman Schiff and one from Senator Angus King. Yeah, wow. nice try. That's weird. We're talking about the uh, Trump well, pause White it, House. No, wait, but, but, you know, he says nice try. But the real, the follow-up question is that, that's curious, isn't it? Yeah. Does that make you feel like maybe Your you got a you you got an incomplete picture of what was going on and that you got a description of the crimes that were here that was so limited that you had some some responsibility to go out there and do your due diligence as a reporter breaking the Pentagon paper story or whatever it is. You know, with the Pentagon papers we already had half the story, which was what the military was telling us about Vietnam at that time. And the Pentagon Papers was genuinely whistleblowing because it was exposing what wasn't being said. Right. But this is like you're getting mm, half the Pentagon Papers and you assume it's all of it. Right. right. And, and the adjective and, you used. And the half that you got was just about the specific like... You know, I don't know. It was like the Air Force covering their it was ass. Just GFK, like, it's all going yeah. on with the with the with the you know, yeah. with the uh, with the with the with the with the Marines are the real problem, not the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And they don't and the, you'll find out about bombing, uh, you know, uh, in uh, in Cambodia or something. Yeah. I mean, that's Release basically the Pentagon what's going papers, on but only the stuff that makes the LBJ administration look bad. <laughs> exactly. Right. And, exactly. And you used the word limited earlier, Sam. I mean, that's kind of apt, right? It's it's akin to a limited hangout. <laughs> Without a doubt, it's just that it's even it's actually even more it's actually even more advantageous uh, for Elon Musk's agenda. Yeah. And it's just the level of irresponsibility associated with just assuming that that is the whole story. Uh, is is stunning because they were so desperate to uh, to pu to push this for whatever. And they all have different reasons. I mean, that uh, Schellenberger is just a is just a hack and, yeah. you know, the opportunity for him to to have his profile raised and taibi has god knows what um and i can i can speculate the, the various different uh, reasons why he's doing it um but Did you hear that he's uh, he like that we won't need to play this exchange but there was with debbie wasserman schultz and the in exchange about like has this been uh you know rewarding for you in terms of materially and he's like well i've spent i i have more money coming in but i've also spent it too so <laughs> which right. is frankly like that's what mark wayne mullen said to the teamsters guy right i mean look the the the, the fact is is that you know uh there are a lot of things that are are gonna you know uh, us doing this video might be more lucrative to us than, you know, I don't know, doing something on the train derailment. You, you could say that you could you can cop to it. But of course, you can't, because I think personally that this is a situation where Taibi realized he made a mess of this. And you can hear it in him trying to sort of like trying to justify it he's trying to justify it to himself as much as anything else yeah honestly i, about, I think that's the case yeah i was talking about cy hirsch when i said you can't let yourself get in that position <laughs> like right. you're just limitedly speaking about this, like getting stuff from the cia oh thanks for that i'm sure every, all of joe rogan's audience needs guidance about what they should do if the cia ever hands them documents and i think he was talking about cy hirsch when he said i think it has to, it, it, it applies to any kind of journalism no i think you know taibi realized that he he effed up Mm. that he just got too carried away uh, the idea that that he was forced to release it on twitter first too is even it makes it even more sort of like pathetic and i think he realized it i think he's embarrassed by it but some people the way they react uh, by embarrassment is to take their lumps and walk away and other people just basically double down on it and uh, that's what he did mm. he doubled down on it because he has no other option. Yeah. All right, continue with that that clip. Are you were that, Mr. Tibi? Yeah, I've, I've certainly heard that in the news. Yes. And but did you see that email exchange? No, I, I have not seen a, uh, an exchange from the Trump White House. So I, I have seen one from Congressman Schiff and one from Senator Angus King. Yeah. Oh, nice isn't Trump. that isn't we're that talking about convenient? The, uh, Trump White House uh, and people under oath confirming it. Hmm. Oh, that's it. All right. Sorry. 
Um, yeah, I wish his uh, follow-up was a little bit better there, but he did call him TP, so <laughs> he was struggling a bit. <laughs> but the fact that it was so easy to sort of like buy, buy these, you know, jokers. I mean, this is, this is, you know, this was not the A team mm -hmm. when it came to sort of like, uh, um, this is not the A team when it comes to sort of like questioning. The fact that it was so yeah. easy to embarrass Taibi there um, is a function not of of the questions as much as how 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 incredibly uh, tenuous Taibi's position is here. Yeah, I, I, the uh, follower uh, there on Twitter why, at wide of the post uh, said, you know, this is a perspective. Thought DWS botched it. She should have been much more specific and asked how many paid subs he gained on Substack since December and why. If this is independent and he's concerned with censorship on the platform, he was silent when Musk banned multiple mm -hmm. journalists after files round two. Uh, and as a college uh, kid you, who used publicly available flight tracker data to make a bot that Musk framed as quote assassination coordinates, even though he's your team uh since tweeted his exact location and that kid's account was nerfed along with his main so right yeah. of course where's the principle associated with that i mean give me a break give me a break i mean we've got you, you talk about government censorship look at what's going on in florida we have the chairman uh the ceo of penn who i'm sure both taibi and Grima, all of them have cited yeah multiple times in the past as being the authority on these type of things Say, yeah, well, okay, maybe there's a, but the, you know, what's going on in Florida is the, the, like, that's the, that's where it's happening right yeah, now. Yeah. Government coming in and censoring. No, I mean, it's like how they cite Chomsky or something when it's come time to attack the Democrats, but never when there's any sort of criticism to made of the right. And AOC has already, already ended this like weeks ago when she showed that the uh that tr the twitter content moderators changed their policy to accommodate trump and his tweets and they also changed their policy to accommodate Gr libs what Gr sorry? sorry go ahead yeah uh, go and ahead. they changed their policy to accommodate uh libs of tiktok too and the fact so that, that that is not nearly as as reported is a failure of those so-called reporters a real desperate failure and, and they're still going on and defending it. Yeah. I mean, you, you, they could have shown up at that hearing and said, in retrospect, I made some mistakes. That it was, it was, it was, I got incomplete information and I, and I presented it as if it was complete. And then I went on to say, other reporters should be doing the work, uh, you know, to fill in the backsides. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. That's bullshit. Yeah. That's bullshit. It's not going to happen. Because no one has access, direct access to this material. And then while we're at it, the other day, Taibi was also basically saying that uh, the FTC requ requesting um, uh, journalist records. There was a letter of consent or, uh, uh, between uh, Twitter and the FTC before Elon Musk was CEO because Twitter had a long uh record of treating the privacy of its um you know users with total disregard and the ftc said you know you need to keep us abreast you need to do x y and z whatnot it became apparent that the to the fcc that they weren't and when executives at twitter said that they have provided access to journalists. Systems, there was one tweet in particular, systems and uh, data, which is incidentally, systems and data could very well be the private information of individual users. When they announced that they were giving that to a third party, whether it was journalists or anybody else, anybody who is familiar with that type of stuff means that the FTC, under the consent decree that they signed, had access to that stuff. And that's the way that the FTC wanted to determine if people's tweets or private information, rather, had been compromised. And he's talking about this as if it was like, you know, uh, the Obama administration coming down on journalists, you know, uh, talking about national security, um, uh, which... Incidentally, I think was highly problematic. Worse than that, 
uh, under the Obama administration. But to equate these things is so self-serving and so undermining of like genuine concern that exists with national security stuff. Yep. And he's been on this, you know, Russia Gate was was like weapons of mass destruction. Really? Because there's a million dead Iraqis who might disagree with that. All right, let's. Uh, Do you want to have a little fun with some AI? Yeah, let's. Yeah, let's. Uh, let's wrap up things with a little bit more fun here. Um, so yeah, this is. It's really just. I should just say. I wanted yeah. to say to people, it's really disappointing, yeah. because uh, of all the people engaged in this stuff. I think a. Um, I have more respect for Taibi than any of them. I personally also had a, uh, a personal uh, friendship with him, um, and I also think that like. He is, um, there are, the dynamic here with Taibi is more fraught, I think, emotionally than uh, with the other people. Not for me, but for him, rather. And it's sad to see uh, somebody so um, d degrade himself in this way.